So a really common example of a relative clause in English is the boy who lived from Harry Potter. Who is how we Hi. mark relative clauses in English. It means that this verb, this little clause that's going to be a sentence, is used to describe this noun over here. In Japanese, we mark our relative clauses a little bit differently. What happens is that the verb is going to be in short form. So this would be dictionary form, ta Hi. form, or nai form. Those are the three forms that we'll do there. So when you see a, dic a verb in that form, and then it's touching a noun, like otoko no ko, that means we are using this verb and whatever is attached to this verb to describe the noun. So ikinokoru means to survive. So ikinokota otoko no ko is a boy who survived. Same in that past tense. Mm. Um, you could have it as ikinokoru otoko no ko, which would be the boy who lives, right? So the tensing would change just like in English. You could, you could still do that. Okay. So right over here is a random example of me moving things about. So ore wa me no mai no mono kesu is I can make, I, I can, I will disappear something. I will make something disappear right before our eyes. So all you have to do to turn this into a relative clause is grab this verb and then grab something, whatever else is attached to the verb, like the particle O, for example, that's attached to it. And you just throw it behind the noun. So, me no mai no mono o kesu ore, and ore wa me no mai no, ko, mai no mono o kesu. <laughs> this is basically the same thing, but the difference is that this one mm. right here, we're describing the subject. And this is the most, this is basically how the majority of sentences in Japanese are made to be longer. There's a lot of relative clauses is super popular in Japanese. Like uh, in English, I would say um, relative clauses are kind of avoided to some extent because we start calling them run on sentences if you have too many relative clauses. While in Japanese, they're like, mm. give me all the relative clauses, baby, stack them up, make it rain. And you'll have relative clauses mm. inside of relative clauses and yada, 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 especially in writing. Versus in English, I feel like a lot of our relative clauses are mostly in speech and in, in like comparison. Um, so that's why a lot of times in Japanese, you will translate a sentence in Japanese into multiple English sentences because it starts sounding a little bit off when you um, translate it in one English sentence because it starts turning into a run on sentence, okay. which we're told is not allowed. Mm. Okay, so I have two sentences here. Does Orewa Dorobo Da have a verb in it? It doesn't. It doesn't. So because of that, you cannot make a relative clause out of Orewa Dorobo Da. It's not possible. There's no way to make a relative clause out of that. So for our purposes, as an example, I make a longer sentence. You do not have to change anything from Orewa Dorobo Da. And this is how, this is our main essence of the sentence. This is our basically goal. And if we wanted to describe right. ore with some extra information, such as with from a relative clause, we could change this sentence so that we can do so. So how could we add this information to describe ore? Mm -hmm. So we can say me no my no mono o kesu ore right exactly this would be the i that will disappear things before your eyes is a thief perfect and you could have a different tense here like shishta which means i who already made something disappear is a thief or you could have it into nai mm. or mean kesanai which you mean I who do not make things disappear for your eyes is a thief. Um, and this is very common. And as a random piece of information, which we'll touch on more as we see it, the thing you can describe doesn't have to be the subject of the main sentence. If I wanted to, you could use this to describe the object. And it's kind of obvious because it's by context. 
which one is this describing? So, for example, you say, ore, ore, ore wa kesu mono, for example, you can, it's already going to have the particle basically to say, is that the object? Is that the subject? So, whatever something in the sentence is just, that's a noun, is going to move over here to be described. Um, so, okay. So, yeah, that was our sentence we made. I will. Hmm disappear things before your eyes. The I who disappears things before your eyes is a thief. Okay, so now my goal is for you to make your own sentence using basically these many sentences. The first one I want you to make is the magician moves their magical stone. How could you say that? Hi. Magician moves their magical stone. So magical stone. And then before Okokasu, it would be Medo Seki. Medo Seki. Medo Seki. Medo Seki. Oh. Uh, and then in, in the end, it would just be Majutsushi. Hi. Majutsushi. That's nice. You did a beautiful relative clause there. So, how would I turn this into the magician that moved their magical stone is Khan? How do we do that? Khan, in this case, is a name. Hmm. Magician that moved their magical stone is Khan. Huh. Guess we could do Majitsushi mm -hmm. could be at the end. Majitsushi. Then before that, Ugukasu or. My hint is that Madoseki. what you have right there, Madoseki yo Ugukasu Majitsushi, you don't have to change any of that. That is perfect as it is. And you're going to want to add something either to the beginning or to the end of this to make that sentence. Uh, hi. So we just do konwa. Hi. Konwa. This is grammatically correct. Kon is a magician. So I'll add da over here. Kon is a magician that moves a magical stone. Perfectly grammatically correct. Um, my example English sentence was um a little bit different. It was majutsu wa konda, but these are basically the same konda. sentence. So versus saying the magician that moved mm. their magical stone is Khan, we could say Khan is the magician that moved their magical stone. So as you can see, both of those are grammatically correct. Khan is the magician that moved their magical stone. So yeah, that, that's that's all you gotta do. Perfect. So yeah, that's how relative clauses work. You just it just means this this sentence is describing a noun. You have to know so tokoro is a word that refers to place and time. Oh. It's sometimes they call it the state because of that. Um so you can use this to describe like when something occurred. So if I said ore wa me no mai no mono o kesu tokoro, that's basically when I disappeared something before your eyes. Um, sorry, we'll be going back to that later. That's why I'm skipping that. Um, so mado seki means magical stone. Do you know what's missing from here? I'm missing three strokes. <laughs> Hi, at the Perfect. Um, so when you're you want to make a square there, so that would be readable. The way how you're officially supposed to do it is that you go down, then you make this little like thingy, and then you color it like that. So it goes like that. Mm. That's just kind of how squares are officially made in Japanese. Just go down little right angle, and then the bottom. 
Yeah. So any square you'll see in a kanji right. is made with those strokes. So even like bigger ones like this, you do the down, you do the right thing, and then you just do the insides going downwards. So that's just how stroke order works. Okay. Um, what is the te form of kesu? Uh, keshite. Hi. Perfect. And what is missing from seki? From mado seki? Four strokes. Mado seki. Hi. Perfect. Nice. So this is probably something you've seen before, which is that shimao gives a almost like, oh no, kind of meaning to things in Japanese. Officially, it means completely. Hi. And it's just like in English, we say, oh, I've oh. done it now. Um, so it mm. kind of insinuates that action had occurred and it's, it's oh no. Ah. I've, I've done it. It's been done. Whoops. Ooh. Anyway, so the way how you add this oh no meaning to things is that you use it with te form, just like how we saw dekiru use. So just te form with shimao. So for example, oh no, it's been stolen or someone stole something would be nusunde shimao. Like, oh no, I stole it. Like, perhaps they have klepto um, mania. That's what that word is. How would you say, oh no, uh, it what it has been disappeared, or oh no, I will disappear it. Mm, so, oh no, I will disappear. So, cash dead, shimao. Hi, exactly. So this is basically will be disappearing, and oh no, when that happens. If you want to specifically mention that it's after that happened, like this has already occurred, you might do the past tense. Keshte shimatta. So whatever verb is the final verb in a sequence is the one that's going to tell you what tense a sentence is in. Um, what's this word right here? Do you know? Uh, is that madoseki? It is madoseki. Perfect. So now your job is to remember the do part of madosuki, which on its own is called chidebe. You don't need to know that, but this means to guide. So what's missing from the do part of madosuki? You're missing two strokes. Um, not sure if I can guess. So you should yes. guess. Very similar. So what it is, is more like a thing like in toki, kind of. Um, all right, looking for you real quick. How it kind of has, it's that same little thing right over here where it's like a line, then it's kind of going like that. That's what's happening in the mm. studio bit. But it's just been squished. It's a squished little whatever that is. Boop. Okay, can you draw it for me one more time? Hold on. Hey. <clears throat> oh, that's too small. Uh, Perfect. Nice. Uh, can you read this sentence for me? Hi. Majutsushi wa madoseki o keshite shimao. So, Majutsushi wa, the magician, shimao, almost or accidentally, keshite. So he made something disappear. Madoseki, hi. So the magician accidentally made the magical stone disappear. Hi. So it could be accidentally. Ultramal really insinuates is an oh no kind of meaning. So Theoretically, since this is in the third person, someone could just be like insinuating that they're sad that this happened. Like it can be definitely accidental, but it's mostly like, oh no, the magician mm. has made the magical stone disappear. They, it's it it quite it it's quite commonly accident, but it it's not limited to accidents. If that makes any sense. So I, I would say like eighty percent chance I it's an accident. 
uh, in the sentence will be in the in the goal sentence. It is an accident, so it's fine to think about it that way, really. But just theoretically, it's only showing suckiness. Uh, for example, uh, a character oh, no, sometimes okay. in anime will say "shibata" when like somebody gets away when they're I... chasing them. It's not really like "ooh no, I accidentally didn't catch them." It's more like "darn it, I didn't do <laughs> do it." Uh, so a lot of times those it'll be translated mm. as "darn it." Um, do you know what A-N means? Just in case you've seen that in anime. A-N. Basically, it means forever. Like, for eternity. A-N. Eternity. Mm. Forever. A-N. So, N part is long, and the A is, like, super long. So, I mean, N is, like, far away. Far away. Like, some kind of distance. So, like, kind of long distance mm. is A-N. Which means forever or eternity. Um, what's missing from the do part of ma do seki? You're missing um four strokes. Hi. It's a hi. Probably be neat. Yep. And then like that like that. Basically, yes. This guy tends to look more like on that side, but most likely a, read, a writing software huh. would be able to tell. So speaking of this guy right here, this this stroke right there, when you're writing it, it normally looks like a three, and then it's that stroke you just did over there. So this is how it tends to look like when you write it, rather than boop, boop. Because mm. no, no one writes like that in real life. Kind of like how A so, is written like this, but on the keyboard it looks like that. I don't I mean, no, when you type it. So that, that's what that is. So they're just like, this is how it's written, but this is what it looks like in the computer program. Okay. So ni in Japanese is basically a way to turn nouns into adverbs. So it basically describes the way you do a verb. For example, shizuka ni yomi nasai means read it and quietly. Read it quietly. So quiet became quietly. Read it quietly. Because we're describing how we're doing the verb. So when you add an to kesu, theoretically it's saying to erase it foreverly, but it just means it's disappearing it forever. The It disappears and you will so, never see it again, is uh, what it means. So how would you say to make con disappear forever? Um, you don't need to put a subject here for the sentence. To make con disappear forever. So we can start at the end and do cash there. Cash there. Forever, which is in. Cash there in. Con no cash there in. To make. Oh no, because to so make. What's the rule I told you oh, about no. verbs? Where do verbs go in sentences? Hi. Right. So it's going to be at the very end. Yes. So an should not be after the verb. So because you were catch down right mm -hmm. which is oh no, oh no, kind of disappeared forever. But all all I uh, needed here was catch it to make con disappear. Um. So an is a noun in Japanese. How do we turn it into an adverb? How do we make this modify the verb? An ni. Hi, an ni. Perfect. So kan o an ni kashite shimau means oh no to completely disappear kan forever. Hi, and what's missing from the do part of mado seki? Yeah, but um, because like this, 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 that, that, that. Perfect. There's a little speck up here. So basically, when you write that, this this is like it's it's a radical. Basically, yeah, it's a weird little boop boop. boop. <clears throat> Perfect. <clears throat> um. Okay, I'm gonna skip that. Do you know what toki means? Toki sounds very familiar. Mm -hmm. it, it means clock, like an old yes. grandma clock. A toke 
Hokke is clock and it has Toki inside of it. Right there, that's that. Um, this is like count or something. <laughs> um, but mm -hmm. so like the count time is a clock, but Toki is time. Ki. Also shows up in Jikan. Jik, uh, Jikan. Jikan which is um a period of time. So an hour, a block of time. That's mm -hmm. what the con means, Ida. Um do so if you say so Toki and Tokoro, a lot of the time can be interchangeable because they both basically would be translated as when in English, the time when this action occurred. Toki focuses more on time and Tokoro focuses more on the action. So Hi. if depending on what you want to stress is basically when you use it, which one. And Tokoro needs an action. For example, if you want to say when I was little, you can't say chisai tokoro. That that's weird. You could but you could say chisai toki when I was little. That's fine cuz it's not toki doesn't matter whether or not there's an action. It just means the time. So tokoro is more restricted. We need to have an action with tokoro if you're using it to mean time. So, but as I said, they can be relatively interchangeable. So these two sentences are both grammatically correct, and you would see both. Both of these would be translated as when I disappear something before my eyes. Well, will disappear, basically. So probably both of these should be like ta or something. Anyway, something weird about tokoro is that if you had data, which is the past tense form, it doesn't mean after this occurred. It actually means the moment right before this could mm. occur. So this doesn't necessarily happen with tokoro datta. Basically, this tends to insinuate this was about to happen. So right before I was about to make something disappear before my eyes is ore wa me no mai no mono kesu tokoro datta. So it was when I was about to do this, basically, right before this action occurs. And Hi. um do you know what nusumu means? Nusumu. Like musuke? Uh nusumu means to steal. Mm -hmm. Steal. Nusumu. And this right here is where we're going to end for today. Can you read this 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 relative clause, whatever for me? Hmm. Ah, machutsu no madoseki o ah misunda. Yep, misunda. So nusumu has been conjugated into ta form. Hi. Juicy o. Hi. So we're describing toki, which is the time. Hi. And if you time. don't know the subject, you can use I. I time soon. So steals time or soon that steals or madoseki. So the magical rock steals time. Majutsu. Yes. So the, so the a lot of things with context. Rock. Um, context does make a big difference. Time. So Toki is almost always going to be like the time. So we're here. It's basically the time when perhaps I or someone else nusumud a madol seki that belonged to a majutsu si, and that would be what you would assume. Theoretically, you're correct. It could be the time doing the action, um, but that would have to be insinuated by a very specific context, just because by default, you would assume it's not that. Hi. Um, but this is an example of a relative time. Just because time is a noun. So it's a time when this occurred. So what hap What what time are we talking about? Time when... Someone shimata. Time when someone stole um the magical stone from a magician. 
So a lot of times this would probably be I. Mm. If I saw this sentence, I would assume it's I. So when I stole, it was when, the time when I stole the magical stone. Because normally the subject would be de um, defined in this kind of clause if it wasn't obvious by context. So if there's no obvious context, the subject is probably I. Uh, that's why you don't see I a lot in oh. Japanese, because that is the assu assumed subject if there's no specifying going on. But yeah, that is where we will stop for today. But yeah, uh, have a nice day. See you next week, hopefully. Goodbye. Bye.